Now, at some point you will want to either build an API or you'll want to build a route out like the one we have here for our topic index to show a list of topics, but in JSON form. So maybe you're making an Ajax request from the front end to this route and you want a list of topics that you can display uh, maybe using JavaScript. Now, in this case, you're going to need to know about a couple of methods that we have on our response object. And these are to do things like change over headers. And we're also going to look at something else, which makes this a lot easier. So we're going to look at the kind of slow way of doing this first. And then we're going to look at a very easy, quick way. So we know that we have a list of topics in our database. We've already seen this example a couple of times. So really, all I want to do here is just grab all of these topics. So we know that we have our database on our container. So we can just do a simple query here and go ahead and select all columns from the topics table. And immediately we can go ahead and fetch all using PDO fetch object, uh, not forgetting to import this at the top or using a backslash here. So now, normally we would return this as a view, but what happens if, like I said, we're building an API and we want to simply see a list of these in JSON form? Well, in this case, we'd need to do things like set our headers. So we would want to change the content type to application JSON. Now, if this doesn't make too much sense, the default content type is text HTML for pages like this. If we just come over to this, you can see here, we have a content type here of text HTML. Now, when you're consuming an API or someone else is consuming an API that you've built, you really need the content type to be application JSON, assuming that you are actually returning JSON. And in most modern APIs, you would use JSON. So let's take a look at how we would do this. Now, it's a little bit different to normal because what we would have to do in this case is return a response and then we would have to go ahead and write the topics data. Now, we can't do something like this. Let's just take a look at why. You can see here could not write to stream. Now, the problem here is that uh, we have a, an array, a PHP array of objects. And what we would need to do here is JSON encode that array of objects which would then just give us JSON. It would write it to the body and it would return that to us. So if you go ahead and look at the response object within Slim, you'll see this write method, which will just basically write some content to your response. And then when you return it, it's just uh, shown on the page. So if we go ahead and refresh, you can see that now we have JSON just in here like so. Now, the only problem is over here, we're still using text HTML. And you're not really going to want to do that because when someone is consuming your API, they may come across problems. So in this case, what we could do is say with header, which is another method on our response object. And again, you can go ahead and check this out uh, in the actual class if you want to. And we're going to say content type. And then as the second argument, we're going to give the content type that we want to change this over to. And in this case, it would be application JSON. So let's go ahead and re uh, preview this in the browser. And you can see that the formatting changed slightly, which gives me a good idea that this has actually been changed. So now we have a list of topics. If you were to make an Ajax request to this on your front end, you'd be able to get a list of these topics and do what you want with them with JavaScript. But really, uh, you'd probably thinking to yourself, this is quite a long line to write just to do something like that. And this is where it kind of pays off to go into the actual slim source code and start to look around. Now we know that here we want to respond with JSON, but we have to do two things. We have to JSON encode whatever we want to respond with, and we have to manually set a header just here, which is a little bit annoying uh, having to do this every single time. Well, if we come over to our response object once again, and maybe just do a search for JSON, you can see here that we actually have a with JSON method. Now this will take in the data that you want to respond with as a JSON response. It will take in an optional status code. So if you uh, maybe wanted to change the status code, you could go ahead and change this over. So that's really helpful. And this will pretty much just do everything for you. You can see here, it's actually setting the header for us. It's going ahead and JSON encoding the data and it's writing it to the body. So really, really helpful. So if we come over to our topic controller, rather than doing all of this, we can now simply change this over to with JSON, passing in them topics. We can give an optional status code, or if you prefer, you could always give a 200 in here. So it's a little bit clearer. Come over to the browser and we get the same result. You can see that the uh, content type here is the same and it's just worked 
as normal. So a little helpful, convenient method here, uh, which reads a little bit nicer than the one that we had before. Now, once again, let's say that you were grabbing an individual topic and it didn't exist. What you could do in this case, and I'm just going to kind of mock this out here so we can uh, see an example. We might say, well, if say a topic doesn't exist, and I'm just saying if true here, so this will always return. We're going to say return response, and you could say with JSON, like so. And then inside of here, you could give an array with maybe an error. So you could have an error here, and this might read that topic does not exist. And we know that with the with the with JSON method, without having to say something like with status, we can automatically set this here. So we could send through a 404, and this is a lot cleaner. So if we come over and refresh, you can see that we get some JSON output. We know that we get a 404, and we know that we also have the correct content type as well. So having to do this normally would be returning a response with a header, and you would have to go ahead and set content type explicitly to application JSON. Then you would have to say with status, and you would have to give the status of 404. And then you would have to write JSON encoding what you wanted to write. And in this case, it would be that array we saw a minute ago with that error in there. And then you would say something like that topic does not exist. So we get the same result but it's a little bit easier to just go ahead and use that with JSON method that we've looked at here. So there we go. That is a couple of additional methods that we haven't seen before with header to change the header wherever we need to. With status, we've already looked at, but we've seen it here in conjunction with the helpful with JSON method. And this really helps to just clean things up, particularly if you're building either an API for someone else to consume or an API to drive whatever you're doing on your front end, maybe using Ajax.